my screen. We can talk about uh, what happened last week. Um, I was looking, I thought I was all clever and stuff by teaching this stuff. And then I found it, it was all in Laird's book. He had planned to teach all that stuff, but not to the very end, uh, which is a fair point um, because then nobody cheats to the end. Well, some people don't, a lot of people do, uh, but that, I thought that was hilarious. Okay, so this is Finley. And just lighting portrait, stained glass, duotone, vignette, black and white background, diffuse glow, JPEG artifacts, removal filter, charcoal, and we've got this one you get for free because you can't really tell what it does that often. So this is where she started out. And this is where she went to. Wow, it's a much worse day, isn't it? Yeah. I'd rather go to this beach. And even this beach looks a little cold. This one looks like a hurricane is about to hit. I have a I have a lot of trouble with this kind of stuff. Uh, it's just there's not enough pixels in between some sometimes there's not enough pixels in between the background and uh, like leaves and things. Um, so all this stuff in here, if you need to grab it all at the same time, like with a lumino uh, luminosity filter or out channel or something, it's really rough because it dithers in between these things and makes it really hard to grab. So you end up with artifacts like these. Unless those are on purpose, then that was cool. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mind them. It's like tint. It's like getting uh, your hair tinted. Nice. And this is yours, Gemini. Is that like a sea monster? I, it yeah, um, Sea Monster didn't work in generative, so I put Water Dragon. Okay. And it worked. I didn't use a beach. I used a picture I took of the pier on Lucerne up here at Clear Lake. Nice. Mm -hmm. See, there's the big mountain. So this has got to be the North Shore. That's AI. <laughs> I oh, this is AI? expanded both sides of the picture. Uh-huh. That's funny. So, so it added almost the same shape too. Yeah, I like I like driving around Clear Lake. We we really only do it once or twice a year, but um, we um, we drive we come in from the north side a lot of times because we. Mm, it's uh, a really good time to go see Clear Lake State Park. Yeah, really yeah, the, beautiful time. Is that is that the little park that's underneath the mountain? Underneath like, the mountain, yeah, at the bottom yeah. of the volcano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, we we have an RV that we bring to the bike race, uh, and um, so we have to empty the RV. So we have to, we've been to that park a couple times, uh, but we've mm -hmm. never stayed there because they have they have a bilge sort of thing. All right, what do you do? They have a couple mountain lions too. <laughs> oh, do they really? Like running mm -hmm. around in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what did I see? Like a whole bunch of birds of some sort, like pelicans or seagulls or something weird. Yeah, there's a there's pelicans. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are a lot of weird so, birds there. Um, I just wanted to point out that when I was doing this, I came across a major issue. Uh huh. And certain things had to be done in certain ways. Okay. Like, um, I flattened the image multiple times to add on, because, right. you know, it was like there was I could only generate so much like if i did the expansion before a neural filter then i had to do a, the filter to all of it at once or i flattened the image and then added the neural filters or i add the filter to the original picture it did this multiple ways mm -hmm. add the filter to the original image and then expand it gotcha but it was like the expand the it didn't recognize um like the dragon it would pull it it just started getting really glitchy. And then there was a day where all 
the neural filters were shut down for some reason or disabled that they were having issues weird like it, an, was, an, it was super weird like an adobe day huh that worth it, everything crapped out that's what yeah weird. i think it was like wednesday or something it was just like not happening so you're absolutely well depending on how you want to build your picture right you want to have for instance if you dropped in this star field if if your picture was this like prop like that and you wanted to extend mm -hmm. it this way and extend it this way um then most likely you would want especially since there's like not much happening over here and not much happening over here you would want to do most of like adding these people and dying this in and um well, this you could do later. Adding people you could do later because those go in the middle. But for generative fill, you have it just takes what you have and copies it. So you don't want to do it before you're ready to, unless that's part of something you want to do. Like if you're doing this landscape and you had a blue sky here, it'll do and the water, it'll do a fine job of doing that. But then you need to cut that and expand it for the sky. It, it looks like it did okay. Uh, but yeah, I end up, um, when when I work in Photoshop, I end up doing a lot of uh, collapsing. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of uh, working um, using smart layers, uh, because a lot of stuff just doesn't work on a smart layer. In, in, instead of just doing whatever up here, you're now into the secondary non-destructive smart layer tools. And it's like, I, ju I just don't have time to, to have to go back to um, uh, non-destructive to, to to work in a way that creates extra work for me. I don't see any reason to do that. When I have copies of all original stuff, I can just bring it back in if I need it. But it is why I keep everything. If I'm working on a picture that's multi-faceted uh, pieces brought together, I usually keep that in a folder all together so that I can go get the bit pieces if I need them. And then before I collapse anything, I will save uh, a PSD. Um, and then uh, then I'll do the collapsing and then I'll see the PSD as a iterate up on it. So uh, every time I collapse, I get a new number on that. So I can always go back to the previous one if I need to. Yeah, that's, that's exactly fine. what I did. Saved a yeah. PSD and then collapsed and then kept going. Yeah, uh, that's a, a really good way to work, I think, because then you get the best of both worlds, not having to deal with all the specialty smart filter stuff, and you're uh, saving. Um, well, you're saving your history, and then I would bring in yeah. a JPEG, like I would save a PSD, and I would export a JPEG, and then I'd bring the JPEG back in and work on that. Yeah. Because it was flattened, so then oh. I, I, it wanted to crash. It was just, there was so much happening, so I just refresh photoshop shut it down start it over and bring that jpeg back in but have the yeah. psd saved it was just like this piece by piece slowly yeah it worked mm -hmm. let's see what you did you did a landscape mixer what's that is that the generative fill thing mm -hmm. the neural okay. filter the neural filter mm -hmm. um uh did sky yeah, I like I, Sky Select. We're going to do that later on today. Yeah. Uh, object Select. That works a lot of the times. <laughs> Colorize works all the time. It worked really well for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which uh, which one of these was not colored? Uh, no, they were fine. I colorized uh, the whole image. Oh, oh, it oh. Was, it, was a, it wasn't a black and white, but it was really desaturated, my yeah. original photo. So I decided to just click colorize and see what it gave me and it put all the blues in the water. Nice. Yeah, the really subtle blues. It's all, it, I can, mm -hmm. it's almost in black and white. And then were the people from are just, uh, are they from the, the are, same thing? Or? Those are my kids. Oh, okay. And you had them pose were, or? <laughs> um, yeah, we did that in the driveway. They were using the force on each other. Nice. Choking each other. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> So I thought it was kind of a good spot to stick them. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, it works really well. The I mean, that and the mood and stuff is great. So this looks like uh, the mood of this piece it would be 
somebody getting choked, right? It's kind of dark and mm -hmm. foreboding, and right. you have the kind of a magical sky, so that kind of goes with it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Cool piece. Generate fill, style transfer. Oh, you Van Gogh? What did you Van Gogh in here? Oh, the sky? The no. whole thing. The whole thing? The whole thing go? is Van Gogh. But it's very, I just brought it way down. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. is, are there like little swirlies and stuff? Did it put in nope. brush? Strokes? No, they no? just kind of washed it, washed it out. The water was a lot sharper. Yeah. And it oh, didn't okay. seem to affect the rails at all. Crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, running running a a um an artistic filter like that on everything and then toning it way, way down is a kind of a weird idea. Like because most of the time when you run something like that on it, you want it to actually do what it's supposed to do. Like the whole point of it, right, is to make it all swirly and, and brash colored. I and guess stuff. in graphics it would, but in photography. Yeah. really small differences can make a really big difference yeah and for me it washed the water out just enough that it wasn't sharp anymore when i was like okay just stop like i didn't want to dull it out too much i didn't want it to look like it was painted fully yeah just just that little bit no it still looks like a photograph now would you've ever thought to have done that before like do you use van gogh all the time to just to do that effect or um well, no, I don't use Van Gogh. I mean, I use Lightroom presets. Yeah. And lately, I've been playing with. There's this guy who has a TikTok, and he does, um, like movie themes. So, so like my kids are really into Silent Hill, so I made the Silent Hill preset. He shows you how to make it, and cool. so sometimes I'll apply that, but you can do it in, in degrees, so I can turn it way down, so it's not blinding white on certain things because you can't adjust adjust the um exposure yeah it blacks it out it's just it gets glitchy so i use these presets but i use them overuse them or underuse them quite often but i huh. haven't used neural filters in my photography yet until now until now and what do you think mm -hmm. it goes, um, going they're, they're definitely beta yeah <laughs> they're really extreme um yeah. they're gonna take some tweaking and they keep crashing so, yeah. but we're we're three months in, so yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm excited that we're gonna have a lot of options. Yeah, can you imagine when it's an open market and people are writing their own? That'll be great. Um, oh, we can. I mean, no, I already no, I mean, make my own presets, so. But I mean, when um, when they're available on the open market, because right now you you can't really get other people's, or can you? Can you go on? Can I? Oh, my room, I can. Yeah. Oh, can you go into Bridge and do it? like that i did i've um looked. no in lightroom you just go to discover mm -hmm. and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of presets that are available for you and you can like or add to your library or you can again yeah. create your own just all kinds you can follow and like and you can purchase them but there's no need really you just kind of shop the free ones there's there's just so many to choose from it's amazing yeah. Oh, cool. I'll have to give that a look. Mm -hmm. But nice picture, by the way. Thank you. And then we have Marines. I don't see how much of this real world useful. What do you mean? Re I live in the real world. I use all this stuff all the time. <laughs> I am insulted. <laughs> uh... Let's see. I don't see how much it's real or useful with the exception of some generative fill or expand. It's generative fix flyaways on people's cheeks, uh, which is notoriously hard to match gradients for me. These jump fix. What are flyaways on people's cheeks? Oh, I know that artist. Um, is that when you get like a uh, a? Um, do you know what a flyaway is? That what she's talking about? When you have stray hairs that are flying, like catching oh. the air, that are not like all smoothed down. Right, and then you. So she's using that to um, 
generative fill to match the gradients on their cheeks and stuff. Interesting. Okay. Which is interesting because you can use content aware erase. Right. <laughs> and yeah. for and for me, I would just take go in with a really light brush and paint over them. Which you don't have to do now because there's the AI version of it yeah. that will blend um, face skin. Yeah. It'll so yeah. if you do a face swap, it'll it'll blend all the light and the colors for you. That's nice. That's nice. Right. So there, re where where is Maureen? See there, Maureen, real world stuff for you. <laughs> uh, that's a nice picture. Now I'm going on vacation. I like all this. It's really kind of strange with the boat. Flowers, very close party. I love these kind of French painting pictures where it's, they're just like uh, layered colors put together with shadows and stuff. It's kind of fun. What did she do? Uh, generative fill, color transfer, colorize, frame generate, 33, twirl. Okay. Um, poster edges. Never seen anybody use poster edges actively, so that's pretty cool. Um, that's level. what I used in the vector. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. To get, to get that going? A little, a little rough my teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, general fill people on the beach. Oh, wow, she just pulled up people on the beach and put them in there. That's hilarious. And uh, expand it. That's cool. I think that's a neat one. I hope people are having fun doing this stuff. Ten, I, I realized afterwards it takes a lot of things to do. Um, that's all right. You guys are pros. Uh, here's Kylie. Oh, she couldn't get them to install. <laughs> and then I like, I think hers is one of the funnest ones. That's really funny. What, they, what do you suppose her prompt for? I wish she was here. Like, what was the prompt for, prompt for getting that guy there? Uh, monster in the sand. Uh, magazine in the sand. Uh, funny glasses. What about <laughs> the guys in the back? What would you prompt for that? Uh, I don't know. Like action figures or um, dancing aliens? And are those dragonflies or dragons or vultures or... Rebobs. I think those are the things. They look like um, the things from uh, Avatar. Not the good Avatar, but the bad one with the blue people. No. Yeah. Is that? What, I didn't watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're like dragons, but they fly people. Hmm. Eat. I mean, a like, lemonade stand. Hard yeah. <laughs> I, I like the color and, and weirdness of this one. This, you know, this it's almost pretty fun. Yeah, looks like a like a Japanese ad for something. Mm -hmm. But they have a lot of fun with the imagery. American ad, Japanese ad, so much better. And I had a hard time coming up with ten. AI features too. So I yeah. Googled it, what AI features are added to Photoshop. Uh -huh. And that's how I found like the quick action vignette is. Right. Um, and object select was. So without downloading everything, because there's not enough to download and do 10. Right. And like I said, it was glitching out um, and they weren't available one day. So it was like, well, I just Googled what else is AI now. And it said object select, blending, sky replacement was so things like that and i just was like okay well i'm gonna go right. down the list of what i can apply to this photo to well, get you, 10 things done you, you had the generative fill tab and then you had all the neuro filters and then you had all the quick actions too that you could have used 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, uh, but then I wanted to like see what else. And like I said, the oh. the neural filters weren't working that day. Yeah, I did a couple images, so I looked it up, and there's there's a lot of other AI features that are just hidden or replacing other features now. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I have to look those up. Um, yeah. I mean, we covered some of them. We covered most of the ones that exist now. I think there's, um, I think we covered where they all live, where everything lives. Uh, it'd be interesting mm-hmm. to see what, like, I know selective, like select sky and stuff is all AI feature. Um, yeah. And then the object select and then sky replacement. Yeah. Um, there's so many. It's just incredible. Yeah. We were. I was in a teachers' meeting today, and um, the other, like for us, right? Everybody's going, "Yeah, this is fantastic! It makes things so much easier." <laughs> mm. uh, and it's okay, right? Because um, it, it's part of the software package that we use, and it just works a little bit better. But like for the CS department, where they're having to write code, right? They're supposed to be learning how to write code. <laughs> They don't have to write code anymore because they can just say, hey, AI, write me code that solves this math ratio or whatever their their problem is. And so and and like the English teachers and stuff are all like super scared that um, that nobody's going to be able to, you know, everybody's going to become stupid because they're just going to use AI to, to do everything. Well, that's the, yeah. the fun part about yeah. when we advance technologically. Yeah. Not everyone does. And, you know, I'm a photographer, but I still know film. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's some of us will be able to recreate these things. I do cyan- cyanotype too. So it's like mixing my own chemicals and making my own film is still a thing, but my kids aren't probably not going to learn that. So unless they want to, but there will be people who, who will be OGs. Yeah. <laughs> learn. Yeah, you sure. need the people. You need the people with the uh, the history to to tell you how good you have it now. <laughs> no, we need people to to keep creating in the AI world for AI to continue to function. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's funny. Uh, speaking of, all right, where well, we're going to do that today? We're gonna, um, we're actually we're gonna do some animation today, which is kind of weird. So. Every this is the last one. So good work on your homework, guys. Thanks for turning that in. Um, those are all pretty cool. I need to give you guys some grades. I'm really bad at grading, um, but I do like when you do t- uh, turn in homework. Uh, and once I do some grades, everybody go, "Whoa, I need to do some homework." So here's today's uh, thing. I'll publish that. Are you okay, Gemini? Do you need a break? Do you. Doing okay. I'm doing fine. Okay. But take so, breaks whenever. It's all good. So today, um, I thought we'd do animation, the animation module, because this is my favorite thing to do. So you guys get forced to do it. But what this will do is allow you guys to make moving pictures, to take your own images and be able to create. Um, like, like living living images um, from a static image, which is kind of cool. All right. So let's get into it. So uh, Photoshop, right? Have you ever seen the timeline, you personally? Uh, Gemini, have you ever even know, nope. did you even know that this existed? So, the timeline? Yeah. Mm-mm. So Photoshop has an animation thing called the timeline, and uh, it looks like this. And um, the timeline allows you to take uh, layers and animate each layer individually, um, or to create, um, uh, st- uh, and then you can play them back any way you want, and you can rotate them and translate them, all sorts of stuff. And we'll get into it. It'll be easier, but here's a brief kind of description of. Uh, what all this stuff is. This is a picture of what it looks like. 
And here are a couple kinds of animation types that you can do in Photoshop. You can do keyframe types, which is just like traditional animation where you draw a picture and then take a take a snapshot and then you draw another picture and take a snapshot and take another picture and take a snapshot. Um, and I put them all down so you can do like this person running here. Uh, most of this is done by doing keyframes, like the extreme poses for this. And then you go back and you do the frames that are in between the keyframes. So a series of keyframes and then in between. So that's kind of explained here. Uh, and then the other style uh, of animation that Photoshop does is called timeline animation, is what they call it. Uh, so what this is, is you actually create the keyframes just like you do here by posing a 3D character or a 2D character or whatever. And then the computer does the in-betweens for you. So this is probably his leg moving here or something. Um, and you can see that over time, it's at this position, it's at this position, it's at this position. And so when you play it, it moves to these places and then back. Um, I won't explain how 3D works, but just so you understand that each of these frames is a location for the dog's foot, the tiger's foot, moving through space. So as it hits this point here, which is like 15 frames, it goes up and then it comes back down. All right. Uh, so the first kind of animation we're going to do is called a sprite animation. And I have this nifty sheet here. Um, um, but we, uh, I did put it in as a file. Do you want this sheet? Um, or do you want uh, to get one of your own? You can really, really just Google sprite sheet and find something it, like this. In it. It'd be great to have your sample. Okay. Then let me just real quickly add that in. I thought that. I knew I should have added it. <laughs> I mean, it's right there, but I'll, I'll add the actual file. I'd like you guys to... Um, go find your own, because I think that that's fun when you come up with your own ideas. But I will add all three of my files into the system. Do, 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 so that you can get them. So the one we're doing now is uh, this one, the screenshot, which is a horrible name. Oh, this isn't even one I cleaned up. Look, it's got the do not copy <laughs> stuff on it. So bad. Okay, I'm just going to steal that. No, no, uh, no regard for copyright anything at all. All right, so let's. Uh, I thought you can steal it for educational purposes. You, well, as long as, yeah, as long as I'm not selling it or, or using it. Uh, in any way, shape, or form for money or anything, and I'm not really. This is purely educational. Educational. Mm -hmm. So um, what we have here is our sprite sheet. Uh, do you know what a sprite sheet is? This is a sprite sheet. Uh, so in, do you know what one is? Quite like a contact sheet, yeah. Yeah, like a contact sheet, but it's a contact sheet that when you put it into software on the web or in a game or um, in a video player that uh, plays like a movie, right? So um, the idea is um, that it's easier to load one piece and then in code, uh, it just takes like a picture. It just shows one picture at a time. So it goes pop, 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 pop. It blocks out all the rest, centers this, and enlarges it to fit the space. And so what we're going to do today is do a um, a reverse uh, uh, sprite sheet. So usually, and I've already grabbed the middle one here and isolated it. Uh, usually, what you do is you paint one, right, and then you create another layer. And then you paint another one, and then you create another layer. And then when you're all done, you put them on a sheet here so that the 
computer can read them. So we're going to do the opposite today, um, where um, I'm just going to come in here and select these. Come on. Select that, and I'm going to go back to this this one. And just paste that on top. And then I'm going to, it's, it's a big cheat because fire doesn't really matter. <laughs> but if it were like a water droplet or something, you'd want to over, make sure that the, the center bottoms or wherever it's emitting from uh, are all the same. I go like that and I come back here and grab the next one. Control C, come back here to this, paste that on the top, come back here, grab this one, Control C, come back over here. There, this one, and you can see the square I have is roughly uh, the size of of the. I grabbed the biggest one first, just so I'd have something easy to work with. Um, but. Um, so I'll skip that because I already have it in there. But you kind of want to make sure that your area, that you have enough space around your thing so that it doesn't clip. Because the second it clips outside this little box, um, it's not going to look good when it plays back. So you want to make sure whatever you have going on happens within that area. Okay, that one, yeah, I can get rid of the background. Yeah, and I can put back in there. No, no, not yet. That one. All right, so now, um, as you can see here, we have uh, all these different layers. And they don't have to be numbered right, but you can number them if you want. Uh, and so now what I want to do is have them play. And um, in order to do that, um, I want to come up here to Windows and then hit Timeline. And then I would like um, to, um, I don't think you have to select it all. I think it does look automatic, but I'm going to select them all and hit Timeline. And then, so you see, I get this weird purpley bit. And so each one of these is representational of this layer here. And this part here, right, is representation uh, representational of five seconds. So basically, if I hit the space bar or hit play here, right, it moves this little cursor around and it's showing five seconds of this one frame. Um, and you, you have all little VCR arms. And, uh, things and, and a cut there. Um, so what I can do this, I don't know if you've ever used Adobe Premiere or anything, but it, it's a lot like that where I can come in here and make this like two frames. And I can actually select all of them at the same time. Oh, what happened? They were all supposed to come with me. All right, all right, we'll do it one at a time. Um, or we'll make all of them two frames because I want them to play for the, the same amount of time. So now within this five second area, each of these is only playing 
uh, two frames, and two frames is uh, a twelfth of a second. So not nearly going to fit that time. And then this this lets you zoom in and out. So now uh, now that I've made these all two frames, I want them to I want one to play, and then I want the next one to play. So I'm going to bring this one over here, right? So now it plays this first one, and then as it goes past that purple section, it starts playing the second one. So you got that one to that one, and then we can just cascade these like a staircase. And as we do this, it uh, you, you can see it plays. like that. So if I hit play, you can see it kind of looks like a fire and I can turn loop on this loops in here. So looping play. And that's sort of how a sprite works. Cool, huh? So cool. <laughs> Never thought you'd be doing that in Photoshop, did you? No, I was hoping I wouldn't, but I'm in. <laughs> Wait, well, you don't like animating in Photoshop? This might be a skill you need sometimes. What if you have to make something for the web? I said I'm in. I mean, like, <laughs> I don't, this isn't what I, I don't know. I kind of swore to myself I'd never use Photoshop. And then here I am years later. So yeah. I just put in um, the application for the certification too. Oh, you did. Which, yeah, I don't. I hope everyone in this class got the email, but the deadline is April first, I think. So we have to apply now if we did the Photoshop one first, and then we want the certification. Oh, if can you do me a favor? Can you send me that email, and I'll send it to everybody in the class. Yeah, I can do that. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll bounce it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Nobody tells me anything. <laughs> yeah, well, good. So yeah, let's uh. I think April 1st. That was Coming it. right up. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to be done with this. <laughs> I haven't so, cried in your class. Laird made me cry. It was, it was very difficult. Why did he make you cry? No, I just cried with frustration. Just because he would like, his method was really difficult. Yeah. And, um, so he would like lead it, like doing the book. He would just tell us to do the, you know, the tutorial in the book and it would be step by step. And yeah. he would lead us down the wrong path and we'd create all these mistakes and, and all this. And then he would show us how to fix the mistakes. And it was just not the way I operate ever. Yeah. And it was just really frustrating, but totally past it. This is way more fun. I'm getting it now. <laughs> was he, um, uh, was he at least doing it on purpose so that you'd learn something? Yeah, he was doing it on purpose. Yeah, so we learned how to fix the mistakes, which, you know, he meant well, and it was effective, but oh, man, it's really <laughs> difficult. I can't mm -hmm. believe, I can't believe you, I mean, people have enough mistakes as it is. I can't believe purposefully building them in there as learning opportunities. Ugh. Well, we also had the book, too. So it was kind of like, yeah, the way I tried to think about it was like building a Lego set you have to follow every single direction exactly. And if you didn't remember one of these phrases that we just learned, you had mm -hmm. to go back and really know what every single phrase meant because he went pretty quick with that. And that's why I think where I just got frustrated because yeah. it was intense. But you, yeah, it was, did, it was useful, it was effective. Yeah, did you find that you were learning, that you learned a lot of Photoshop that way? I mean, you seem very, really knowledgeable no. in Photoshop, so. Um, well, my daughter teased me. She she said every class seemed like I forgot everything I learned every time. <laughs> so now this yeah. this semester is a lot easier. I'm I'm Good. getting it. Watching you do it and then playing with it myself and you know when I have the creative freedom to fart around and make mistakes and, and learn hands on, I learn better. But we don't all learn that way. So yeah, you know some well, people may I've... have had a better time in his class. I don't know. Uh, I try and give you the tools to actually do the task, but then I like to give you the freedom to hang yourself. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think people are, 
generally enjoy doing stuff that appeals to them rather than here's a picture of a kid on a bear um, do it exactly like I've just done it it's like that's not there's no creative in that like you're using one of the most creative tools in the world and you're telling people to not be creative really right but also you know again it, it is a little effective when you're teaching them how to fix their mistakes or how to do something very very technical yeah, but, but you, everybody learns different. Yeah, I like you, this way, way better. And you come to that stuff naturally, anyways. Mm -hmm. In the in the end, you'll run into mistakes, and even when you're if you're farting around or you're doing something particular, like that stuff comes up naturally. Okay, so uh, do you understand what I've done here? Just real quick, um, yeah. each one of these is uh, what two animation frames, uh, two uh, twenty four animation frames is one second. Um, yeah in the world of animation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have 18 frames here. So just under, uh, um, under just about half a second, a little, little less than, a little more than half a second. But you can see how it looks like fire burning. And you can do this with water. Like if I were to, all of other sprites. We could do this with them. People walking, right? This work. You could you could download any of these um, and do what we've just done here and get like a person running, like any animation you'd want to make. Um, dogs walking, all sorts of stuff. I'm totally going to try the Naruto run. <laughs> yeah. That one is he in here somewhere? That one. It has to uh, be. It has to be. Or the guy from Area 51. That's like Rama. Yeah. Oh. Or, oh, um, Akira, the, the guy, the creator of Dragon Ball Z just passed away a couple days ago. So oh. we could do a do an homage. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how all that's done. And that's this is what these sheets are for. And Photoshop, most of these sheets like this, right, are created in Photoshop. So um, you draw this one and then draw this one and then draw this one and then draw this one. So taking this the other way, right, when you're creating a sprite sheet, and let me just get rid of this and close this down. Um, so say you had one of these, right? Then um, so you have one of these and you could build your own just by copying and pasting and then changing it a little bit, painting over and changing a little bit. This is a bit of a hard one because it's got a gradient to it so it's kind of hard to to do this this is a a vector gradient that somebody went in and and all they're doing is if you remember your vector bits is moving the lines around a little bit to get different shapes this shape and and then they're layered on top of each other and then each time they create one of these things they collapse it into yeah, png with a transparent background fun I've unleashed your inner animator now. You can make GIFs all you want. Oh, shoot. Closed it before I showed you how to export it. Done it. Uh, so <laughs> you can, uh, if you still have yours open, you can then uh, over, I'll show you on the next one how to export it. You can export them as GIFs and then send them to your friends if you want and stuff like that. Uh, or put them in your, uh, you can upload them to your Facebook page, right? Because all the kids use Facebook stuff. All right, so that's one way. That's the one sprite, and this is this is one part. The 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 homework is in three parts. Um, one part is the sprite sheet. One part is the moving sky, which is this one, and we'll do that in a second. And then the third part is a character animation, which is. All right. So moving Wait. sky, sorry. 
we take a break? Uh, we can take a break if you want. I could use something to drink. Or you I'm can keep little... going. Of course. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop share then, and I am going to hit pause on the record. Resume recording, resume screen sharing. Cool. All right, you ready for some more of this stuff? Nope. We'll go for it. <laughs> I did find Goku, though. And so I think I'm he's going to go Super Saiyan in my animation. Nice. That's, yeah. that's hilarious. You know, I didn't think about it, but we probably merge all three of these uh, animation things together if you really want. Uh, into one giant animation. Awesome. Um, but uh, so this one is um, is pretty easy. Um, this one, um, we're just going to uh, take out the sky and then uh, put in a different one and then make that one move. So uh, we can do the select sky deal, right? This one used to be a lot harder because you had to actually remove the sky. And then I can go control X and I have I already have one on there, but you can go uh shift control you can go paste in place. I'll put that sky back and then hide this one and then go in and paint this one back um to have the exact same sky. Like if you wanted this sky to traverse, um I actually I would probably go underneath it here. Oh, that's weird how this, the atmosphere of the thing uh, stayed with it. Crazy. Um, then with the soft brush. Yeah, a little less average opacity. I need more than that. Just like it's weird that there's so much yellow in that. Hmm. Like why would Right, like it left a whole halo of stuff. The the remove sky. It didn't. It didn't take any of this brand bit out. It should have removed all of that. Huh. It's been doing weird things. They Photoshop released some sort of crazy uh, thing that wrecked the uh, ink dropper, where it put the 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 eyedropper tool. It switched it from all layers to current layer, and it took me forever to figure out what had happened because I'd go to select a color, not paying attention, and then go to work on something else, and it would um, it would um, not be the right color. I was like really upset. <laughs> like, what's going on? Am I going crazy? Mm -hmm. It's a nice class where you get to paint clouds. La, la, la. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop bothering me. I'm painting clouds. And you can see I just keep um, creating new layers with this soft brush and going really kind of soft in on it. Kind of 
recreate what was there before. So um, why even bother doing this right when you can just bring in another one? Um, well, you very well might want the um, original fill of the piece. And um, generative fill will not do a very good job of extending the sky. I tried it, uh, and it did a horrible job. So I'm going to manually do it. Um, so this being the original picture, um, if we want this picture to move, it's going to need to be a little bit bigger. So I don't want to stretch it too much. What was that thing we were doing last week where you could stretch it, but not too much? Otherwise, it would start to distort. Oh, uh, content-aware scaling. Uh-huh. Doesn't work all that great. OK. Now, I also have these pink puffy clouds. Which, so I'll scale those up to beyond the image plane. Okay. I'll bring all three of these in. And once again, once I have my layers set, um, I can come over here to Windows and open up the timeline again and go generate a thing even bigger. Uh, timeline. What they call that? A uh, timeline. Um, set timeline thing material. So you can see I can also I can turn these off there. But let's look at the functionality of the timeline when you open these things up. So these are right. You remember from before. Uh, there's layer one, layer two, and uh, the clouds layer. Um, good to go. And um, if I click these open, you can see that I have hooks in here to uh, set keys for the uh, position, the opacity, and the style of this. So in case you want to bring the style, change that. So um, the first one we did right, we just had one. Um, we had one animation, and then we went straight from that one animation. Uh, to the next animation, and then on to on like that. This one's going to be a little different. Um, we're going to have all three of these um, last the uh, entire duration, of the, the whole five seconds. And I'm going to hit, hit screen there so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and then all I want to do, um, I want to hide this one. And in order to hide, uh, I'm going to hide the bottom clouds first. Um, so now if I turn that off, you can see that what, what I do over here affects this up here. This just affects the movement. I could have also gone in here to opacity and lowered this uh, to nothing and then set a key for that. Um, we'll talk about, um, about keying opacity in a second. Uh, but we're going to keep position now. So we're not going to move the foreground at all, although we could. Uh, we'll do that in a second, too. Uh, we're just going to uh, talk about moving the background using um, timeline animation. So right here, this is the cursor, right, that goes through our, this is our five seconds of time. And I'm going to uh, hit position here and set a key. And you can see it creates like a little dot. And that means that this background image here is, uh, at this point in time, is saved right like this. And then I'm going to go to the very end of it. And I'm going to hit another dip here. And you can see it's made another dot. And now I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to lock that one so I don't actually grab it. I'm going to grab this. 
and I'm going to move it over a little bit, not so that you can see it's gone off the picture there. So not so that it's gone totally off the picture, but just a little bit. So now this image, right? This image is going to um, the cloud image is on frame five is here. On frame five is here and on frame one is here. And so now if we go in and play it, you can see the, the clouds are kind of slowly drifting by over five seconds. So that's the original picture. That's the original picture with, um, with uh, with the clouds modified to look uh, extended to look like they're uh, drifting by. And now we can do the same thing with the puffy clouds. I can set a key there, there. Come over here and set another key there. And we can set keys anywhere. I'm just start having one start at the beginning and one at the end. Now, move this a little bit, and you can see that purple line showed me, there it is, how far I've moved it from the point of porch. And then we can play that, and now you can see you have the puffy clouds um, kind of moving. And if we want to reorganize this, say I wanted it to look like it was foggy in the scene uh, or there are cloud covers. I can bring this to the foreground here and lower the opacity of it. And then when I play it, this still has animation on it. And this has other animation on it. Now they're both playing um, together. I can't really see the, this one moving too well. So maybe something like additive would be better. And your all the functionality from the layers you can then use in your animations here, right? So if I wanted that to be uh, screen or light or something. All that stuff is good. I'm not really seeing this one here. I can kind of see it in the bottom left with the contrast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's very subtle. Kind of looks like shadows, huh? Cool. All right. Thank you for that. Not losing my mind. I am OK. <laughs> and you do the same thing. That's right. Moving. Um, and if you're going to do this, it's good to have um, speed. You know, vary the speed or something. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to keep this one. Um, the other thing um, we can do um, is uh, there are rotation and uh, scale um, hooks for this. So if we come to um, this one, I'll come to the, this, this uh, foreground image. I can save position here. Um, and then if I right click on this, um, it gives you all these other things that you can do, rotate, rotate and zoom. Uh, zoom. So I'm going to say, I come over here to the end of this. And I'm going to go to zoom. And to see the zoom, how much you're zooming in, right, you have to um, open up the properties. There. It, it's open. So that's kind of like a, a rack focus. So kind of 
pulls in as the clouds are going by. And then this becomes sort of, right, uh, indistinguishable from, say, a, uh, a film, a movie thing. And all you're doing is moving elements around. So you can, uh, if you have photographs that you, you know, you'd want, you want to animate, this is a really nice way to do it. You can also animate shadows going across. Um, if we got like a um, airplane, we we'll put an airplane. <laughs> Please wait while I find a good airplane. Please stand by. Select Sky. Select Sky, I have a feeling, is going to save me like 10 years of my life. Little layer five position there. No, 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 position there. Go here. I accidentally had the keyframe here, so it's a keyframe at the very end, and I wanted the keyframe for that one at the very beginning. But here, oops, come on. Not see my layer five. Oh, you know what? I mean, it, it's not showing the picture. Is it way over here? Oh, yeah. The purple bit has to be showing in order to show it. I somehow screwed. All right. Keyframe there. Keyframe there. And then here. Just layer five. Well, it would have been helpful had I said a key. <laughs> All right, you guys are making me angry. You, you, and you. Freeze. You. There we go. There. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sorry. I have to, I've been putting it in transform mode. I've been going control T, right? To put in transform mode so that it's highlighted and I can move it. Mm -hmm. 
wish I could go like this too. I'm using the key on the keyboard to move it because it's being a pain in the Totally believable. <laughs> so this is sort of a simple one, but it's a it's a good precursor. Like especially if you want to have just one um, animated element in it. A lot of illustration these days, um, they're kind of doing this so that um, it's just starting to set things apart from uh, normal illustration. Um, so if you want to, you know, having, having slight movement to your illustration is kind of gaining momentum and with AI, not Photoshop AI, but, um, other AIs, um, you can just tell it to animate whatever, like, Hey, animate this scene a little bit. And you've probably seen a bunch of that stuff. Cool. Any questions? Not well, yet. Yeah, that was a lot of information, so I don't know where I'm missing anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little weird, but just know that you can build as much animated, you know, as many levels as you want to put into this. Just like animate, or just like creating a picture, you can animate every single one of those. Like you can make a flower grow from down here. You can scale things up and down. Um, this all this these things are a little wonky, and we'll get into that in the next animation we do. Um, they they definitely, if you wanted to do this on purpose uh, and you had After Effects laying around, I would go use that instead because it's the same exact process in After Effects for animating. It's just done better, and why Photoshop hasn't integrated all of After Effects tools into it for uh, this module. Like why, why there's no rotation here is a huge glaring problem. Like um, to, to have to rotate this in the way that you have to rotate things is really a horrible where you have to right click and then hit rotation and then um, go in and make rotations and stuff. It's kind of rough, kind of rough. Um, we'll Can you show me, show us guys how to um, export? Yes. So that lives right here, of course. Uh, uh, you know, why wouldn't that live in this little tiny hamburger on the side of the keyframe? Uh, so you just go render to video. Uh, or render video and this pops up. And then you can uh, tell it what kind of thing you want it to be. Right now, it's set to H.264, high quality, 16. That's a big document. Um, um, and give it a, a video size and stuff. Um, and then where you'd like it to be, a desktop. And, um, and you could say this is where you would change it for, to a quick time or a, a GIF or something. Uh, I don't have it at the right resolution for a GIF. I have to switch it to GIF resolution, whatever that is. Um, but you can also uh, call up the um, encoder thing and it'll switch it. But H2, uh, this will make it an MP4, which is a very nice um, video format. And you could, if you only wanted to record it from here to here, you could give it frames. Um, it's using OpenGL to record the video. Aspect ratio is document. The frame rate is 
24. Thir 30 is video frame rate, but most people use 24 for it. All right, all done, hit render. And pops it onto your desktop. Let me open this up. You do audio? I might do audio. I might have an audio chat. I think it does. It's pretty funny considering I just flew southwest into um, Sedona. So. Oh, did you? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Is oh, yeah listen, I forgot. It does, it does have an audio track here. So if you have audio, you can add that to it. Um, I don't have, I have sound effects like but I don't, I don't know that I have an airplane. Why don't I just, there's electric hum. Uh, and then the audio, I think you can just drag and drop it. Let's see. This is an MP3. What person? So do you just hold the file and and drag it over? I just drag it. Yeah, drag, you drag it into the uh, into the the timelines, and it opened up a new thing. So I dragged that file into this. But I think this is it's created a video file. So hold on, let me just check. Mm. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> so it did. It brought the audio in. Okay, so here's this right. And then um, drag that in, drop it, and it seems to create its own little file here. So I I bop that out. Um, uh, I bop I bop that out, and then just uh, copy that. Actually, what I did was dragged it in and dropped it in there, and then it added it here. These blues aren't audio files. The blues are video files, and you can see the little video there. So it seems to be taking, uh, I know it accepts some sort of audio, um, but one of these is a wave, and one of them is an MP3, and it just converted them both to AVI video and then dumped them in here, but the sounds are still available. So that's kind of weird. <laughs> and then you pretty have, cute. Yeah. It's like a, a mini animation studio. That I have no idea why they included any of this in Photoshop, but there you go. <laughs> oh yeah. I wonder if I reduce the opacity if it would alter the audio. Um so uh, then, of course, um, when you go to um, back here to render video, uh, you have to make sure you have audio ticked on, if that's an option. There'll be a media encoder. You went really right. fast. Where do I go to render video? I'm sorry. This little hamburger here, of course. Oh, that one. OK, I thought you were up higher, because I have the video for our Zoom over there. So. I didn't see it. Cool.
render video. Okay. I'm not seeing any audio things here. Let's see if it renders audio. No, I just put the video in there. <laughs> I want the video in the video. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So um, what you what uh, I didn't show you, or what you don't know what's going on, is that uh, the audio bits are way longer than the video bits. So as I scroll over here, I have like 21 seconds of audio uh, and only five seconds of video. So uh, what I need to do is bring these in line with each other so that the time on it is the same like these however long your purple ones are that's how long your blue ones should otherwise it will record frames beyond what you want and you can set this thing image here um, will allow you to set how much video is recorded this is your so you can if you need more time uh, on your timeline like you need six seconds for or something uh, you can bring this over, or you can stretch one of these over, and then it automatically goes, or you, then you can bring this back and cut this off. So if I had this like this, where even though this is uh, beyond the timeline, uh, it would have only recorded the five seconds. Um, you can also cut it, right? But you have to have the time, you have to have the little red line there, and then I can have this selected, little red line, the time indicator line, and then hit the scissors, and it'll cut that out. And then I can just delete that bit of it, and then it's, I don't have to worry about scrunching it. Although you can scrunch it like this. It's just, this is, think of this as um, being visible within this amount of time. So this is the, this is the audio, and it's, as long as this red line is within these bars here, it's visible. But the second, um, the second, it's the second you get be uh, where you can't get beyond this piece here, you won't be able to see what's up on the screen. So if I move this beyond there, right, and then all you can see is the background because the foreground is cut short. And the same thing if I extend this way out here and then it goes beyond the background, then you can't see any of those. So these little purple, these bars here indicate how much time this picture, these pictures will show. And you can control um, your um, elements like that. Like I can take the airplane, which is this one here, and just cut it off here because you don't see it beyond there anyways. Yum. What else is there? There's looping is here in case you just want to play it and be able to see it. Yeah, for instance, if I wanted that horrible noise, my airplane noise, <laughs> to end with the airplane, I could come here and cut these here, uh, or I could just do that. And then if I wanted this to play a different part of that, I could slide it in here. Say I had like 10 audio pieces in here and I only wanted this last one to play. Then I could move this around so that it's centered on what I wanted to hear or just move this here. And then when I go to play it, and when it goes off screen, you can't hear it anymore.
Cool. You got all that? Okay. Just do that again. <laughs> so a friend of mine is on Instagram and he makes these quite often and he I think he's using timeline for this too. And it's um on Instagram, his name is Porus Walker or Porus Two. Uh-huh. And he's from Napa and he has, I mean, they're definitely not appropriate. There's <laughs> a lot of pizza and and human parts. Um, and mushrooms, which has a lot of mushrooms, but they're hilarious. And he, he nice. pieces together things like this. His animation is quite often it's, um, just funny to check it out. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as you guys are mostly photographers and stuff, I thought this might give you a bit of a different outlet for your work, um, being able to kind of manipulate it like this and you can um, add stuff to your um add stuff to your photographs um if you want before you post them and there's definitely giving us an array of tools which you know um we may never use but yeah we might we might we may come up with some reason of why we want to do something like this well, pretty cool. there's so much to photoshop that nobody ever even knows exists it's really hard to learn it all and you can honestly you know spend your whole life in one little part of it uh, i'm fortunate enough where i've had to use uh, a huge variety of the tools for the different things that i do whether i'm doing um, adverts or animations or doctoring photographs or uh, any of that stuff um, I've, I've had to um, use quite a bit of it um, and I'm trying to think of things that are super interesting to show you. The, I sh what I should show you is what the uh, the Photoshop 2 book has. Because <laughs> it's nothing but masks and uh, uh, like masking part two and smart layers part two. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that to them. We already covered all that stuff. Um, you so can I'm spare me. I have the book. Yeah. Oh, you do. You do have the book. Yeah, the, I have the book. The part two book. Ah, cool. Laird, yeah. yeah. But it is 2022. Yeah. So a lot of it's changed. Yeah, he had neuro filters and actionable items and uh, automation in there, which I was, uh, I'm glad he did. I didn't think neuro filters happened in 2022. So, um, but they're on the menu for sure, which is kind of weird. I'm like, oh yeah, they are there, but it's like, um, chapter 15 and 17 or something like they're they're far later um cool all right i got one more kind of a thing to show you and um and then uh we're done for the night because um usually this takes me longer to go through other people's work and talk and stuff but <sighs> since it's the sean and gemini show um not that i'm complaining i'm so happy that you're here uh mm -hmm but we get through things a little faster than we normally would. There's a lot less questions and things like that. Yeah, and for better or for worse, you're like one of the smarter students that I've encountered in Photoshop, so. Um, well, I hope it's for the better. I know yeah, that yeah. I'm having a better time learning these things because I did try a couple of your lectures where I just wasn't getting it. I had questions, didn't want to email you and bother you with all these things. So this oh, is helping me so much oh great yeah um, no feel free to email me anybody out there hey people watching asynchronous asynchronously email me i'm happy to uh to chat and then i also have that that thing that thing you know that thing with the stuff no i have the uh instructors chat here in case you really want to ask me a question that pops up and then there is a student chat too, in case you guys want to talk to each other. But I don't know that you guys do talk to each other all that much. Um, yeah, I need to check in on the homework and see where everybody's at. Uh, unfortunately, if people turn in stuff late, I don't really know until I go back and look. And I hate missing people's work. because it's, it's always super cool. Uh, that's like the funnest part for me. All right, back to Photoshop. Uh, let's take another quick break. Um, uh, why don't we come back at um, 
in uh, uh, five after um ten ten after five after or yeah, what is, eight o'clock yeah why don't we come back at eight o'clock i'll do one more demo for you and then i'll cut you loose cool eight o'clock i will still be here because i am contractually obligated to stay till nine but you can go <laughs> <laughs> okay cool all right i'll see you in a little bit That down, mate. We're good. All right. Recording and sharing, and we're sharing. Um, <clears throat> by the way, uh, these things with the timelines and stuff, right? Um, save as a PSD. So. Mm -hmm. And you can um, you can close the timeline. And it still has all your files here. Uh, the same way. You can't see any of the stuff, right? Because it's. <laughs> I wonder if I can unlock those, if I can see the airplane. There's the airplane. If I open that up, I imagine I could. Yeah, there it is. Um, anyways, so you can save them as a PSD. All right, this is our final uh, sort of animation here. And can you guess what we're going to do now? Make her talk or lift the drink? Uh, yeah, let's make her lift the drink. <laughs> it's waiting to get a prompt from me. No, uh, so we're going to, let's let's move her arm here. And so how do you think you go about doing this now that you've seen sort of what's going on? What do we need to do? Kind of like the first one with the sprites. You need to recreate the image with the arm. Move yes. The, right? So that, that's uh, pretty much right. Um, so think you, you um, it's a bad example because nobody uses them anymore. Uh, do you know uh, like what a paper doll is? Uh, of course, yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. So, that's sort of how this has to be set up. So I'm going to use the um, tool, the uh, drawing selecting tool, right? And I'm going to um, select pieces of her, edit, uh, and then paste them back, paste in place, and then hide them, and then go back. X and then edit paste in place. Find that. <clears throat> and all right, we'll do part. So one thing you want to remember when you're making paper dolls. Uh, you know what, I'm going to go around the martini glass. Is that um, where it rotates from, the pivot point, it's called. Uh, you want to make sure that that is a rounded surface. So see here, her arm here, that's kind of round. So a rounded area won't be as recognizable as a cutout. Um, let me add that piece there. Thank you. X, V, this one is arm. I'm going to name these this time because they're hard to keep track of. This one is wrist. This one is hand. So basically anything that you want to move, you have to like go into the original and separate out. Uh, also, um, foreground objects and background objects also need to be separated. I'm going to switch to the polygonal um, selection tool because I can't, my hand isn't steady enough to try and grab these long straight bits. 
to the polygonal selection tool. Help me out. Uh, and then, so um, I uh, separated that, oops, so that it's, um, uh, because her arm moves behind it. So I need to make sure that the glass here bops up to the top of the stack because it's a foreground object now. Um, great. And then I'll do one more. Do her head, I think. And I lost it. Lost cohesion. And you don't have to be super careful, but it should be close. Like you don't want to, you don't, you should go over, not under. So I want to select more than I should, not less. All right, come back down here. X, control V. Great, that's the head. Okay, guess what? Now we have some work to do. <laughs> um, so some of this, right, a generative fill take care of. So if I select all of that and hit generative fill. So because we have now our other objects here <clears throat> are going to be moving in front of it, they may well. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, an exact replica. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want it to do anything. I just wanted the best. I like the other options too. <laughs> Go for hilarious. number three. She's perfect. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Like, I absolutely did not want another head. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now, because generative fill so let me down, uh, is delete that garbage. Yeah. And we'll do it old school. Uh, I'm going to select the. Um, um, stamp tool. And just kind of fill this with color. Remember that her head is actually in front of this to some extent. Let's see. So we've gone too far. I have to back it up. Dang it. I was too crazy with it. I've been too crazy with the stamp tool. That was smart. Stamp. That hide her head. Let's get in here close. And then I'm going to come the other way with the uh, color on her skin mm -hmm. and get where her hair is going to be. So I need my full strength. There's the head. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> and then you can see that by doing that, I can now um, move her head a little bit and it won't, the background won't uh, look like it's weird. Which is the whole reason we did that. <sighs> see if I get that black bit, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. Okay, so now the head's taken care of. Oh, here, we might as well finish it up. I don't know what we're going to be animating, how we're going to animating too. So it's best to um, have um, some sort of backup plan just in case we want to animate more than we need. Okay, so here, I'm pretty sure we can go like this because it'll recognize this pattern. And that I think I can use generative fill. Seems to do better at this kind of stuff. Like if, if 
if it's kind of left up to its own devices, it kind of freaks out. But when it's um, kind of a defined deal, it does a little bit better. Yay, great. What are the other choices? That. Oh, I kind of like that one. That one has directionality to it. I think this one's the best for our stuff. And we're going to do uh, your favorite thing, Gemini. I'm going to merge those together. Because I don't need that one. No. All right. And then let's try this one. I think generative field does better. The more you can grab, the better it seems to do in creating what's supposed to be there. Although it's already taken longer now than it would have taken me to actually do it. Hmm. I don't know what that is, but I'm not unhappy with it. Oh, that one. Oh, no, I don't want to carry those through. It looks like a skeleton. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. That's not bad. OK, except that I need to get rid of all this, too. Let's get rid of this arm bit here first. And this, even though we're moving her arm around, I still need a little bit of background for the top bit where it's going to be rotating. I'm going to kind of go like this and make that shape. And then I'm even going to come in with this white color here and kind of continue that highlight. Um, if I go back, you can see that it's kind of there already. But I want to make sure that. Um, when I move this, it, it does OK. OK. But this, I'm going to go like this. This, I'm going to go like this. And then we need to kind of define, oops. Let's do point. Okay. So we know that this is where the lines here are where her dress kind of is. So I don't know. I know that I can take, I need to take this stuff over here, this weirdness. As close to that as possible in case I end up moving her arm a bit. Cool beans. Okay, so now we got that part done. So let's look at this part. I'm going to close all that down, and let's just look at the the uh, martini glass. I think that's OK. Hand. And do some quick fixing on the hand. Yep. Get some sloppy grabbing.
And this is like the stained glass assignment Sorry? we did, right? This is like the stained glass assignment where we just erase around the edges and clean up our piece. Yeah, yeah. So now we're just taking, uh, right, we did the background bit. And now we have to uh, go in and then make sure, because we were kind of sloppy, or I was kind of sloppy about how I pulled these things out of the image. I mean, if I put them all in there, right, it'd be hard to see um, what's going on. And we don't want to take out too much because, like, I did lose a line there, didn't I? So in the glass. I do need to bring a bit of black back into that top of that. Um, because uh, that black is a separate, in the illustration, it's in a photograph, this is a little different. But in this illustration, the that black line there, that little tiny one, separates the um, class from the arm. Okie dokie, sort of there too. You want to make sure that um, that um, you clean up all your elements. Arm. Not wrist, arm, not wrist. Yeah, I am. No, I'm not on the right layer. You're having a hard time seeing what's going on. Like I can barely see what's going on there. You can always uh, create a layer in the back that's gray. And that will allow you to, oops. Sorry, I have to go like that. <laughs> layer in the background that's gray, not your arm layer that's gray. Uh, and then you can see all the kind of yucky edges and just go ahead and clean them up. Maybe not that much. You can even go in with a fuzzy brush, kind of make that work. And then remember I was saying about that round thing, uh, if where you have joints in a in this kind of animation, the paper dolly thing, it's better to have a rounded bit in case, for when you move the arm because that looks better. So if I bring in the wrist, you can see that they connect. And I'm going to put the wrist in front of the arm like that. And that's so that when I move the wrist around, uh, it looks better on the arm. I'm still going to go in here and fix that one. And on the wrist, I'd like to have this kind of be that shape instead. So I'll just paint that in and kind of that, bring the hand up above it. Doot. Great. And then if I leave the hand, it's pretty okay how it is. Like that. Try and watch out for artifacts too, because a floating artifact will give away that you're animating it, that it's not a single piece. OK, so let's look at the layer structure that we've created. I didn't do the head. You kind of get the idea. Um, here we have the background. This one I can delete now because I don't need that. Uh, here I have the background. If I delete, if I close that, you can see there's all our pieces that are going to be animating. Um, there's the head. Here's the arm, here's the wrist, here's the hand, and then here's the martini glass, which actually won't animate, but her arm will move behind it, so it needs to be in the foreground. So the top one is in the foreground and goes all the way back to the background with these things. 
and you can see that the hand is in front of the wrist, the wrist is in front of the arm, uh, the arm is uh, in front of the body, and so is the head. Both these elements are in front of the background. You got it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lot, but I think I'm getting it. And we're yeah. recording, so we you know we'll get that. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, when you're doing animation like this or setting up your elements like this, even to you know even from an illustrative point of view or photography point of view or however you want to do it. Um, it's, I don't know if you've ever done any set building, but that's the, the best explanation I have for how to do this is, um, well, you in photography, right? You have your foreground objects, your background objects, your mid-ground objects, right? So think of this like that, where the things that are in front, right, are your foreground objects. And so they need to be layers above the other things. And so each layer that's in front of what's behind it, especially when it needs to move in front of, the thing behind it um, has to be on a layer uh, hierarchy wise in 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 the the layer things above the one below it so that's why we have the glass which is in front of the arm at the top then the hand then the wrist and that, and that, and that so when that's all set up great uh, you can just save it And then we can call up our timeline again once we have our thing set up. Generate timeline. And you can see that they're all set up here for us in hierarchy. We got our default to five second thing. Now we need to go and animate this. So how do we do that? Well, these are um, these are all um, on the timeline for five seconds. So we we'll make that just what our, our kind of default time. And we're going to make what's called a cycle, which means it starts at one point, it goes to a, a little bit, and then it comes back to the same point. So the glass, I'm actually going to lock out because we're not. The glass, I'm going to lock out because we're not going to use that. So I'm going to hit the lock here so we can't interact with it. Um, but the hand, I'm going to, on frame one, put a key on it. And the wrist, I'm going to put a key on it. And the, what else we got? Uh, the background, I'm going to lock out because we're not going to use it. Um, arm and the head. I'm going to put position keys on everything. Then I'm going to go to the end of the animation and do the same thing again. So that means that um, all these items are going to start and end at the exact same place so that when we play this, right, uh, it'll loop back and forth from one from one thing to the next. It'll you'll never see it cross over because it starts and ends at the same place. So it'll start here, go to some place, and then go back to where it starts and flip back here and keep going. So that's called a, a loop or a cycle. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go to two seconds in, and I'm just going to select the hand. And I'm going to move it uh, here. Um, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And then you'll see mm -hmm. that. And then I have to hit uh, accept because Photoshop's put that new feature. And then, uh, oops, I forgot to rotate this at the beginning and hit accept. So I'm going to back it out. Or I'll just come back to the beginning and rotate it back to where it's supposed to be. There you go. Yes, yes, except. Mm, oh, maybe it won't let me rotate it. It's supposed to let me rotate it.
Maybe we have to put a rotate key on. Custom. Rotate. Clockwise, sure. And it rotated and zoomed. OK. You're going to need to watch the video for this one. Because it's really a bad system. I should just move it and then not rotate it and then not confuse you. Let's do that. And I'll come back and rotate it later. OK, pretend I never said anything. Nothing's happening here. OK, so now we have our keys at the beginning and the end. I'm going to go to frame two again here. And I'm just going to raise her glass up a little bit. And I'm also going to raise her arm a little bit. And then I'm also going to um, move this up a little bit, maybe too much. I wonder if it'll let me scale it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, this is a pain in the neck. Usually, mm -hmm. oh. frame two. Problem is, it wants me to do this. It wants me to do a set custom keys for everything um, before I get started. I was hoping I could just move it and not have to do any of that stuff. I Up a little bit like this. Okay, now, if I hit play, you can see it's moving very subtly. But, you know, it, it has a little tiny bit of life in it. It's all quite a bit of work to get there, right? <laughs> um, but even more so to do the rotations. It's supposed to, uh, it's supposed to, I'm supposed to be able to key rotations into it and it's not behaving. But I mean, even this is, it's not too bad. It looks nice all subtle like that. Uh, I don't like that the glass is moving. Very angry glass that's, all jittery. Like if I move it, I think it's just the play black can't handle dealing with it on my computer. Because if, if I play it, then it, you see it shifts a little bit. But if I move the timeline, it doesn't shift an iota. So I think this is more what's going on. All right, let's see if we can get the head to turn a little bit. Now this is a little funky duty in here. the head and I'm going to go to the first frame. I right click on here and go custom and then go rotate. And then you can see when I rotate her head. <laughs> Why does it have the arm selected too? So let's lock out everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. 
I need to sort of rotate key. Rotate. Take that off. Just rotate. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. But see, it rotated. When I made the head layer, the whole picture is as big as the whole picture. So it's rotate. It's in order to move the head, I have to rotate the entire stupid image. Yeah. But now I should be able to rotate it without it being grumpy at me. Because I, I set the first key. Yeah, there we go. I love that new function. I wonder if there's a way to get stop that from happening. But you can see now it, uh, her head is rotating. And so we can do the same with the glass. Let's try. Now that we got it dialed in, because I'm sure um, this will be difficult for everybody. Since it's difficult. All right. What do we do again? At the glass, there it is. Hand. Let's undo that and lock everything else out so we don't accidentally select it. Come back. And uh, then we right click on the hand so that we can um, set a rotational key. We hit rotate. We make sure that resize is off. Oh, I locked the hand. I locked the hand. Set rotate. Yeah, we're good there. And we're good there. And let's go to frame two where it's moving. And we rotate the hand. And then translate it back to where it's supposed to be. And hit OK, because God forbid we'd actually move it to where we want it to be. Oops. Bring that back. My poor computer can barely move this. These are big images. There it goes. So I can actually also select, because I want this to start and end at the same place, I can hit, select that, hit Copy, and then come over here and select this one and hit Paste. And it should go back to where it was. There's the rotation. Mm -hmm. 
like our head warped a little bit too. I didn't even see that happen. All right, so we'll take that, come over here. You can do the same thing here. This just makes your timelines bigger or smaller. Um, close the hand, open the hand, oops. Copy that key, come over here to this key. Hit paste. Oh, and get rid of that one. Ugh. So it's very important that these start and end at the same time. So if you if your ending gets off from where you started, you can always, like I said, copy and paste the key, copy the first key and then drag it over here. You can even delete the last key and then paste the, the first key over there, which might not be a bad way to go. So if I stop this, I can delete that key and I want this one to be the same. So I can copy that one and then come over here and then uh, paste that key. Oops. Uh, actually, I have to create a key? No. And there has to be a key, key there already. And then I can paste it. But then I can move it over to where it's supposed to be. Okay, and then when you're all done, you can just save this. And then you can render it out. Render video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder, look how big that picture is. It's 2K. I don't think my screen can display too thing. And you can see the rendered one is way nicer than the, the display one's kind of low resolution. So if we kind of look at this, let's look at the breaks here. Um, you can see there where her arm is moving back that you can now see the, the background before it and it kind of makes it more of a believable character is out in front of the background. The, I did funky things with the arm. Um, and um, this this arm is raised too much. I should I should lower this arm and rotate it up a little bit so that this works a little better. But um, the rotation is a pain in the butt. But her head works okay. And if we wanted to just for fun. One more thing. I'm sorry, Gemini. One more thing, and I'll let you. <laughs> so I'm above the head here. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to go in and grab this 
the color where her eyes are. And so I've created this blink, Doo -doo, but it doesn't need to be that thing. A blink is only like three or four frames long. So here we're mixing, this is a, again a two frame animation and we're mixing that with the linear animation. Like this little, this animation has really no um, I, delete, I copied the head. I wanted to copy the blink. This uh, this blink really it doesn't it doesn't have a timeline animation. It just happens so quickly. I just have to make sure it's over the top of that. And you can do that with anything you want. You can create new layers and insert them just for a second or even for longer. Oh my God. <laughs> And you might have to animate this to match. Like I honestly, I would have probably animated this or um, created this to match the book before I animated the head and then animated both layers together. So it'd be a little easier. But after the fact, you just have to kind of track it a little bit. La, 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 la. And then we record you saying that so that we could put the vocal well, loop in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can add all that kind of stuff, right? It's you're not just limited to paper dolling the thing around. You can actually animate on top of it all you want. Add as many layers as you like um, to get that kind of stuff. Just draw over the top like I did there. Um. I don't know if you've ever seen like Terry Gilliam's stuff where he makes people talk and stuff. It's very done in a very similar way where he takes photographs and then cuts their mouths out and then makes them kind of puppet mouth around and stuff. So I just run this out. Yes, this methodology work any photo of any sort.
such a classy gal. La, la. Hey, hey. La, la. Cool. All right, that's your homework. Any questions? Um, yeah, if I email you a live photo from an Apple phone, does it show up? Like, is it still live for you? Um, oh, you mean, does it have like the 37 option, optionable pieces to it? Well, like, will it move? Yeah. Oh, a live photo. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah, I don't know if an Apple live photo will move for me. Unless I, I mean, if you emailed it to me and I had an iPhone and I opened it, it probably would. But it's not I, on my PC. I don't think I could open it in Photoshop. Okay. Try, do, try doing that. Try opening it in Photoshop. Mm. Is, and see if it works. I think I'd have to, well, I can airdrop it. I just, I think it the live photos, it just creates a whole bunch of um, metadata that only iPhones can read because it's too high of a compression. Um, mm. it, it's, it's some weird oh, it's magic. It's coming up as a smart object. Oh, it is. Mm. Yeah, I've never played with that. Yeah, it doesn't, no, it just, just a no, still. It's a letdown. Yeah, it's just Sorry. a still. But you can export each of the stills. Um, you know, go, I okay, move it to that one and export it. it. Move it to that one, export that one. Move it to that one and export that one, right? Because in smart photos, you choose which one you want to be the dominant one. Um, you just have to, would you would just have to exp um, save them off one at a time. Okay. In, you know, in case you want to make like your your kids running or something. Right. Neat. Yeah, you'd be much better off just posing in the different run site run positions and saving like five pictures. Yeah. No, this is really cool. Um, I learned in photography that Edward Moybridge is the mm -hmm. first one to have done this, which makes it really really cool to like where it's come to. Yeah, and in, in, in fact, um, in the animation circles, Moybridge is considered uh, a, a huge um, part of the craft uh, because, because he did what he did, early animators were able to see what yeah. motion looked like one frame at a time. And so a lot of animation is based off Moybridge's the photographer. Yeah, his horse, right? We, we, call him, we call him Ed Weird. Ed Weird. Ed Weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 few, few, too, few too many like groups of naked men uh, parties uh, there well, in his photographs. It's, yes. yeah, no, it's, it's, it's for art, right? It's science. Yeah. We need yeah. all these naked men playing football for science. Um, <laughs> well, you know, we need to know how they move, right? Yeah. For yeah. So we can Photoshop them one day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I emailed you. I took a live photo of her blinking as you played it, live, okay. live photo, and then looped it or bounced it and sent it back. You may have to use your phone. I don't know that it'll work. I sent you two. So one was the... Um, uh, I'm in the wrong school. Certification. Oh, me... Certification for... Oh, so that's the other one. Other one. Oh, see, there you go. So it's just a live nice. photo and it and it loops. Maybe kind of cool. Well, that's neat that it plays. I didn't I didn't know I thought it was like, yeah, Apple only or whatever. Yeah, what is what format is that? If I downloaded it, what would it give me? The GIF. Uh, Interesting. Oh, oh, neat. Yeah, so when you explore that, fast it's I need my GIF. No. <laughs> 
Okay, that's how you can make gifts. There you go. I did not cheat. Don't grade me on that one. <laughs> Every you're cheating somehow. You're no, this just... is called experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, Neat. there's how to make a GIF. And the other email is our Photoshop certification. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will send uh, it out. April 1st, I think. Yep. yep. Cool. Yeah, and there's I'm a link there. I'm surprised they didn't send this to everybody. They may have. I don't know. We haven't heard from everybody. I'm, I'm the guys. So. Yeah, it's not like we get to talk to the rest of the class. Right. Shame the rest of the class. Asynchronous buddies. Um. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I won't see you next week um, because I'm going to take spring break off. Okay. So not um, next week. Yeah, exactly. but the week after. And this, this, these three assignments are due. It's one assignment times three uh, are due is uh, in two weeks. So. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a good one. I will catch you later. Have a great spring break. Yep, you too. Bye-bye.